Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So it's always a pleasure to come last, no? Not sure about that one. <laughs> kind of reminds me when uh, we had to play volleyball in school, you know, when uh, they had to pick teams. That happened to me. <laughs> I still have nightmares about it. <laughs> Anyways, we're not here to speak about nightmares. We're here to speak about dreams. And our dream started here. This is us, 7th of October, 2017. No, this is not Jean proposing to me. Or can be proposing to me, no? Yeah, depending how you look at the picture. <laughs> but this is us in the middle of our ascent to Everest Base Camp. We actually got married just one month before, and rather than spending three weeks in a luxury resort, we thought, let's do something crazy. Let's take our backpacks and go traveling for five months through Asia. This is one of the first pictures we posted on our newly created Instagram account. Who would have thought this would be the start of our new career as travel influencers? Definitely not us. <laughs> So, you've guessed it, right? We have a huge passion for traveling and we are living our dream. We managed to make traveling our full-time profession. We are the faces behind Backpack Diaries. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jean, what are we going to talk about today? So, you mentioned travel influencers, but I mean, Camille likes to, word, to use fancy words usually. And, but what does it mean to be a travel influencer? I mean... We've been doing it for a year now, and our parents, our friends, still have no idea what we're, what we're actually doing. <laughs> Every time we come home, we come home to the same questions all the, over and over again. How did you become travel influencers? What do you guys do during the day, apart from lying on a beach somewhere in a tropical location? That one actually comes from my mom, <laughs> every day. <laughs> and how do you guys make money out of this? And so we thought that today we'd use this opportunity to give you an honest answer on each of these questions. And, but don't expect any secret recipe or something like that. Because in the end, like always, it always comes down to hard work and dedication. Right. How did we get there? So to tell you how it all started, I need to take you a couple of years back. Before our time as travel influencers, we were, we were both working in a normal job and we just love to travel. Who loves to travel here? Just raise your hands. Yes. Exactly, exactly my point. <laughs> we were working as uh, strategy consultants in London, which means we were working long hours. We were not seeing much of each other. But as soon as we had some holidays, we just pack our bags and go. You know how it goes when you're traveling, right? You have that occasional phone call from your mom, your dad, your mother-in-law. <laughs> Yeah, we had quite a lot of those. <laughs> so rather than putting our cell phones on mute for the entire duration of our trip, we thought, why not take all of our pictures, some of our stories, and put them on a blog so that they know what we're doing. That's how our travel blog, Backpack Diaries, was born. But the real fun actually only started one year ago when we left on that five-month honeymoon trip to Asia. We just got married and we launched that joint Instagram account together. Yes. That's what we do nowadays when we get married, no? We don't have kids, but we launch a joint Instagram account. <laughs> so that's what we did. And we started posting about some of these crazy places we were going to. We like that trip to Everest Base Camp. We also went camping in the middle of nowhere in Bhutan. We survived for a couple of nights uh, alone on a deserted island in the Philippines. And quite quickly, this drew some attention. A couple of months into our trip, we maybe had two, 3,000 people following us. A growing number of people were encouraging us, and this pushed us to do more, you know, be more active on social media, get better at, at taking pictures, and post more. By the end of our trip, we just reached the 10,000 follower mark and we just started to make a little bit of money with our Instagram account. That's the moment where we thought, okay, baby, let's take a leap of faith. Yeah. <laughs> we thought, okay, we want to continue to travel. We had just gotten back from five months in Asia. Our minds were full of new ideas 
and we had zero intention to return to an office job. So that's what we did. We continued to travel. And uh, you have to understand for us, this was a huge decision. I mean, put yourselves in our shoes. We had the security of a job. We had a salary coming in every month. We had decent career prospects. And we decided to let all of that go. To be honest, I thought it was super scary. Thank God I was there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you were there indeed. We were just super determined to make it work. Now we're one year into it. Um, we're speaking here, so I guess that means we must have achieved something, I guess. We've grown our Instagram account to 85,000 followers, and we have around 40,000 followers on our blog. Thank you. Thank you, guys. This was it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Beer? Anyone? So, now, let's keep it serious. So, we, we've been doing this for a year now, and so we thought it would be helpful if we would share what we think are the key success factors to, to nail the social media game. And so first of all, find your niche. I mean, this seems obvious, but very few people actually follow this rule. If you want to gain traction on Instagram or any other social media platform, find that one thing you're really passionate about and start posting about it. Could be anything. For us, it was travel, but it could be nutrition, health, even sharks, for example. Second, create good content. Um, and the important part here is to create content that is relevant for your audience, but also that stands out. So many people nowadays are posting about their travels that for us to stand out, we really try to make a lot of effort into creating visually very attractive images. And third, and most importantly, in my opinion, is the distribution. Try to get your content seen by other people. I mean, if you cr create amazing content and you're a super artist, but no one sees your post, or it's your mom and your brother and your dad liking it. It's like, yeah, it's not going to get you anywhere. So the problem is here, there's no secret. It's a lot of effort and investment. But one trick that worked very well for us was to reach out to the big pages out there, the ones with millions of followers in your niche. Just reach out to them and tell them, guys, can you please repost one of our pictures? I mean, you're going to get ignored a lot in the beginning, but um, as long as Sometimes one of them is going to repost one of your pictures, and that's going to really take your Instagram account to the next level. Right. My mom's question. What do we do during the day? I wish I could tell her we spend most of our time lying on a beach. Unfortunately, the reality is a little bit different. Actually, a lot of people have the impression that travel blogging or blogging even in general is a quite chilled and relaxed job. And we don't blame people for thinking this, because this is kind of what our pictures and our stories are showing. The truth is, if you want to make it in social media, you have to work hard, especially since now it's an increasingly crowded space. The cool thing for us is that every day is different, especially when we're traveling. But in order to keep growing and to stay relevant out there, there's a couple of things we have to do every day. First of all, well, we, we need to keep feeding our, uh, our accounts, so we need pictures. So when we're traveling, we find what are the good spots, head out there during sunrise or sunset for a photo shoot. This can mean that sometimes we have to wake up hours before sunrise, bribe a fisherman to take us with him on a little boat in the middle of the ocean, jump in the water with sharks by the time the first rays of sunlight appear. That's the story behind this picture. That was not a fun thing to do, I can tell you. But, but at least the, the picture turned out pretty cool, no? <laughs> so on top of the pictures, we also need to feed our blog. So we need to write articles. That means that whenever we go somewhere, we have to know what's the coolest beach on the island, what's the best hike you can do. But most importantly, what can you do here that's not written in every guidebook? So we hang out with locals. Jean buys them a beer. Or two. Yeah, sometimes even buy them ten. Yeah, but let's not talk about that. <laughs> let's not talk about that. <laughs> Anyways, we hang out with locals and they tell us what are the cool stuff to do. Usually they are a much better source of information than anything else. What else do we do? So then in the evening, we would typically spend a couple of hours behind our laptops. 
going through the photos of the day, uh, working on her blog, but then also creating this Instagram post, like the daily Instagram post. And I think this actually t takes up much longer than what people would imagine. Because as I said before, for us, what we need to try to achieve is standing, is like outstanding imagery, like images that catch, capture the attention of people. And the trick we use for that is actually professional photo editing software. And here's an example. This is a picture we posted recently on our account. And this is actually the original one, taken on our camera, straight like as anybody, anyone else would do it. The difference is pretty striking, isn't it? And that's the cool thing about these softwares. You can just play with uh, hundreds of different parameters to make your photos pop a bit more. But my point here is not how these softwares work. My point here is that a couple of months ago, we had no idea how these softwares were working. It's a skill we had to learn completely from scratch. And you know how we did it? Just by watching free YouTube tutorials. <laughs> I mean, guys, how lucky are we to live in a time where all these resources are just available one click away from us? I mean, you would be amazed to know how much you can learn just by watching free YouTube tutorials. <laughs> But unfortunately, don't get too excited. It doesn't work with any type of skill. I mean, no matter how many football tutorials I'm putting on at night in the living room, Camille just doesn't seem to pick it up. <laughs> Even though I try, I really try. Anyway, let's head on to our last question. How do we monetize this? And I have to say, it's uh, quite funny, actually. When I was working as a strategy consultant before, nobody ever bothered to ask me how much I was making. Now I'm making much less, and I'm getting this question a couple of times a day. <laughs> anyway, the point I want to make here is that it's not easy to make money out of it, especially in the beginning. I mean, for us, the first couple of months were definitely an investment. We were living off the money we had put aside for our honeymoon. This means we were traveling as cheaply as possible. We were sleeping in hostels, often sleeping in dorms, taking night buses, preparing and cooking our own food. I mean, traveling-wise, these were probably the best times we had, don't you think? 100%. <laughs> so, um, we just traveled as cheaply as possible and were focused on creating content. When we, our account started to grow a little bit uh, bigger, we started to email hotels and ask them for free nights and meals in exchange for social media content. And this actually worked. We actually got our first free night when we were just under the 10,000 follower mark on an island in uh, Thailand. It was a five-star hotel. Imagine our faces when we got that email. Guys, Camille's bags were packed in 30 seconds. It <laughs> never happened before. <laughs> When our account grew even further, and this is when we reached the 50,000 follower mark, suddenly we started to get loads of requests from brands who asked us to do collaborations with them. So they would send us their, their products, and they actually pay us money for us to show their products on our feed. How cool is that? I guess that's the point where we started just about to break even, right? So exactly, that's the moment where we got into this little self-sustaining model where we would break even, exactly. So it's kind of a big deal in startup world to break even. It means that you're not losing money anymore, which, which, is, which is kind of important. Um, but so what we did when we were out traveling is we're putting our flat for rent. We'd get pretty cheap flight tickets because we're very flexible to fly at any day of the week. We would get free accommodation and meals from the hotels we were staying at, and we would get additional income from the brand collaborations to pay for living expenses. So that was it, guys. Like, I mean, we, our life was complete. <laughs> we just found a way to travel to the dreamiest destinations, like we went to Myanmar together, to Hawaii together, and recently to French Polynesia together, our all-time favorite, by the way. But people were paying us to do this. Like, how amazing was that? And so TEDx is all about inspiring people. And Camille and I have been inspired countless times before by previous TEDx talks. And today, with our talk, we really wanted to give you a glimpse on how we tried to completely reinvent ourselves from our previous jobs, completely try to learn new skill sets to turn our passion for traveling into a full-time occupation. 
And we really hope that we managed to inspire some of you today and give you the belief <laughs> that if there's something you're really passionate about, everything is possible. Thank you very much. Thank you.